Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Some uh, a few years ago now, I think I did a, a bit of a roundup of some of the Minolta cameras that I was owning at the time. I don't think I've got any new ones since then, but uh, I'll put a link to that uh, review of some of my Minolta cameras or a, a look at some of them um, underneath because it's relevant to what we're doing today. Because in that uh, video, I talked about having just acquired this camera here, which is a Minolta SRT101, and uh, I um, I was given this along with a a um, what do they call them? A twin lens reflex, a Rolly twin lens reflex, and also a large format Rolly um, projector for medium format and ordinary 35 millimeter slides, which I've also shown on there. I haven't really done much with the uh, twin lens reflex yet, but I'm intending to use it properly one day and do a review of that. But this was just a wonderful gift from a, a, a wonderful man who was a, a friend of my father-in-law's. I'm going to take you through a little bit of a uh, slideshow in a minute to show you uh, some of the photos that I've taken on that camera, which I was talking about going on a bit of a trip when I did that previous video. So I've got a few actual film shots to show you and com you can compare it with some shots that I took on my 600D on the same day at the same time. So that'll be interesting. So where do we go from here? So I've got the manual and uh, this is a little brochure here. I've got another big brochure somewhere, which I haven't got time to look for that and find that at the moment. But I'm going to go and share the screen now. And uh, oh no, before I do that, I'll just show you some of the finer points of the camera. Uh, in some ways, it's quite a heavy camera. It's quite uh, bulky and, and weighty, and it's all metal, and uh, it's got some interesting features on it. One of the things I think you've got to be a bit careful of on the uh, the bottom here. I think if we turn it this way, you might be able to see it a bit better. You see, it's got uh, the battery charge and uh, off, on, and battery charge. I've got it turned to the on position at the moment. When you're not using the um, the camera, it's a good idea to turn it to the off position because it might actually be um, using up the battery. Um, when you um, just wind the camera on and you look through the viewfinder, you'll get, I'll show you in a minute, you'll get a needle and a um, a pointer and a gap, uh, two, two things, a circle on a pointer and another pointer, they've got to come together for the exposure to be in, in line, but I'll explain that as I go anyway. So, so on the top here, you've got your usual um, shutter speeds, Got a wind on lever, um, got a little window for a counter there, and you've got a self timer lever here. One of the things that's a bit tricky about this camera is compared to some of the others, a lot of the other SLR cameras, film cameras and, and digital cameras, they have a button that you press here somewhere so you can undo it. But this one here, see that little, um, that little notch there, that little thing there beneath my finger there, you simply push that down, which I've just done now. And it's not much play in it at all. Push it down and then you can take the, the, the lens off. See that there? So I'll just show it to you again so you can see it up close there. So to put it back on, you just line up the red dots. <laughs> Excuse me. Line up the red dots like so. On there, I think. You might be able to see that. And um, and you just put it in. So this has got a um, a beautiful... Uh, 58 millimeter f1.4 standard lens on the camera beautiful lens great great uh, portrait lens lots of good bokeh you would get with that as well and that's your rewind button you've got to hear a little dial on the back which is probably pretty useless these days where people can compare what the asa or iso was with the din reading which you didn't really need to know anyway so um and you've got a little window up here on the dial where you can actually set your um uh, ISO reading or ASA reading, so it's set for 400. So I, the last film I shot in it was a 400 film. Um, so I'm going to go through a few points on it in a minute. Probably not all of them because I don't know how all of them work. <laughs> anyway, it's a beautiful camera. And uh, to open up the back, to put a film in it, you just pull up on this, this lever here and it pops open like that. And there's the uh, the take up spool over there. So you just um, load your, your film in here and loop it in there and then wind it around a couple of times, uh, take up the slack and then press the button a couple of times until you advance to shot number one. So at the moment, 
I've just opened it up. So now you can see that it's on uh, uh, right at the start of the, 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 the shutter count there in that little window next to the, the wind on lever. So I wind that on once. Sorry, I had a little bit of a, a coughing fit there. That's uh, one of the problems I've had for a long time. If I talk too much or too suddenly without preparation or some lubrication, I start coughing. Um, anyway, I have medication for that, but uh, I need a little bit of lubrication. And that looks like a scam call. So we'll just wait for that to stop ringing. Now it's stopped. So there you go. So um, I think I was showing you what happens when you um, you wind the lever on and take the shot. So we'll open up the uh, camera again just to show you there. That's resetting the counter. And then to you put your film in, shut that down. I usually uh, I usually wind it up a little bit to tense the, the film and then uh, <clears throat> make sure it's taken up properly. And then you just do a couple of shots. You wind it on once. Click it. Line it on again. Click it. And then you are up to number one on the counter there. You should be able to see on there. It's up to number one on the counter. Then you're ready to start taking shots. So that's a simple manoeuvre you do there. And you've got all your different shutter speeds on there and uh, your ASA setting on the top. So let's get back to business. <clears throat> so that's a little bit of a look at the camera. So I'm going to uh, share the screen here a little bit. And uh, I've taken some scans of a couple of bits of the uh, instruction manual or this little booklet that I had here. <clears throat> so I'm going to share the screen now and see if I can find that. Just bear with me while I do this. Okay. So here we are again. Now, on the screen, you should have um, a picture of two people there. The man uh, with the dark shirt on is Whoopi Richardson, who was the, the gentleman who was a close friend of my late father-in-law, Dud, who's sitting there with the khaki clothes on. And Dud... Uh, was my father and all they were great mates growing up together and uh <clears throat> whoopie or wilf richardson he he was a um, uh, an amateur artist i suppose he sold some paintings but he did lots of artwork and uh, the reason i after he died his his daughters gifted me his equipment because he used to do lots of um landscape um uh drawings paintings out in the flinders ranges and places like that but he used to take photos of them first and then paint them. And he had a huge collection of stuff. We've got a couple of his paintings here somewhere. Very talented man. But anyway, he was the one that gifted me this equipment that we're talking about now, the, the, the Rolly Twin Lens Reflex and the uh, Minolta SRT 101. There's also some lenses that came with this Minolta. And they're pretty good too. This one is a... Uh, uh, I'll just show you, you won't be able to see it up there because I've got the screen up large. But anyway, there's a 200 millimeter uh, fixed focus telephoto lens there, which is a um, f4.5. And there's also a wide angle lens in here, a 28 millimeter one. So I've got quite a th three beautiful lenses that go, go with this camera, but I might show them to you towards the end anyway. So let's go on to the next slide. So that's, that's Whoopi. Up on the wall behind them, you can see one of his paintings that he's done. Uh, he's taken a photograph of that scene and then he's painted it afterwards. It's, 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 sorry, it's a bit fuzzy. It's not all that clear. Uh, now, we went on this holiday to uh, to Renmark, which is my where my wife comes from. And uh, we were staying in that cabin there. You can see one of my cameras. I think it's my Canon 400D sitting on the table there. So I took these first few shots, um, not on my Minolta camera, but You'll see some shots afterwards that I take have taken at that location. So I had my Canon 600D camera with me that particular uh, trip, and uh, which I've now swapped with a friend. He's got that, and I've got his um, Olympus OMD. So that's where we were staying. Now, where do we go to from here? Should be able to go to the next photo. And then we should be able to go on to the next one. That's right. So there you are. So that's, that's a painting that he did himself, but that's not a that's not one he would have. He might have taken a photograph of that building, 
but that just shows you the um, the skill level that he had of of, of some beautiful uh, artwork that he was doing. So this is um, a little bit about, and I'm going to show you some video in this uh, video as well in this movie about when you use the little light meter. In the, I've taken some uh, vision through the light meter of the actual camera, which I'm hoping to show you afterwards. Um, of of what I'll just read a little bit about that. You should get a to uh, find read it there for yourself. What do you do when your eyes at the viewfinder? What you do when your eyes at the viewfinder probably has more to do with your photographic success than any other single thing. BSRT 101's control center viewfinder is designed to help you compose accurately, focus, and adjust exposure in the quickest possible time. I find using this camera is very similar to using the Pentax Spotmatic. It it doesn't have a um, a split. Uh, image in the middle where you can bring the two halves together to get your focus. You've got all these little fine micro prisms, as it says there on the side there. And um, you can see there, there's an indicator needle and a follow up needle. If you can just see where they are. The, and then down, if you look down below on the uh, below the viewfinder, you see all this when you're looking through the, the, the lens, when you're looking out through the viewfinder. As you adjust your shutter speed along the top of the camera, uh, that moves along down there, and I'll show you this in action afterwards. And then the idea is you get um, you, you move that along. You've already got your aperture set, or you can do it the other way around. Set your shutter speed first, and then your aperture, or or vice versa. And uh, when you bring those two needles, the, the indicator needle and the follow up needle together, that means your exposure is correct. And there's uh, some other meter warning indicators there as well. So it's it's a nice feature, a bit like my Pentax KX. You can actually see. The actual lens barrel through my Pentax KS X when you're looking through the viewfinder, but that's an actual uh, electronic system that you're looking at there. So that's just a little bit about how you use the metering. I'll just read this here. Uh, or it says both aperture ring and shutter speed dial are coupled to the CLC meter. So you'll get a reaction from the follow up needle where, whenever either is adjusted. So let's just have a look here. So setting the correct exposure, when aiming the camera at your subject through the viewfinder, you will see the indicator needle moving. Once the indicator needle has stopped moving, turn the shutter speed dial and or the diaphragm ring to align the follow-up needle, the circle tip needle, with the indicator needle. The shutter speed is indicated in the viewfinder when you set it on the shutter speed dial. And it says here, when the proper combination of aperture and shutter speed setting is made for correct exposure, the follow-up needle, which is coupled to the aperture shutter speed and ASA speed settings will align with the indicator needle. And they're saying it is recommended procedure to set the shutter speed first, depending on the motion or lack of motion of your subject or the overall lighting, and to then adjust the aperture. If the needle fails to, if the needle fails to move <clears throat> when the diaphragm ring is rotated, um, this signals a need to adjust your shutter speed setting. A shutter speed scale is visible in the viewfinder, which permits you to move permits you to make all exposure adjustments without removing the camera from your eyes. This is a really good feature of this particular camera. Now, don't forget to remember when you're not using the camera, I said at the start, turn the battery off so your battery's not draining when you're not using it. It's a little bit there about shutter speeds. If you set the shutter speed lower than a 30th of a second, be extremely careful of camera motion while releasing the shutter. One of the rules of thumb for this type of photography is that in the old days, um, if you uh, had a shutter speed of a 30th of a second, that means you could safely handhold the uh, the camera if you had a 28 millimeter lens on. The 28 number is close to the 30th of a second number and vice versa if you've got a um, uh, a 500th of a second um, shutter speed, well that means you can hold a 400 millimeter uh telephoto lens steady without shakes and all that sort of stuff so that's a check up on that rule that's a pretty good rule so let's see where we're going to go from here that's a little bit i'm going to show you some of that afterwards i've taken some stuff with uh, looking through the viewfinder and i'll show you some of that afterwards so i'm going to add that on to the end of the actual movie uh, when i edit it in an iMovie so now this we went on the way to renmark we went to a little town called karunda it was in the news yesterday when some gentleman who died there left quite a large sum of money to the town so they can do some special projects there. So that was interesting. Anyway, they've got these big silos at Karunda and around Australia, uh, there's a, a whole movement of people having their big silos, wheat, wheat silos in their towns painted with 
great big Australian murals, which is a bit of a tourist attraction. It brings people through their town. So there's a number of these. You can go on the actual silo art trail uh, each year. They're adding to these all around the different country towns. So that's a Karunda. That's a close up of the side of it. That's a close up of the other end of it, this silo. Another close up there. Beautiful artwork. Hello from Karunda. I'm taking that from across the road, I think, through a, uh, a little frame. Now, let's give you some idea of what we're looking at. Now, the, the trick for you is to work out. I've taken some shots of this on the, the Minolta SRT 101. So the trick for you is to work out uh, which is which. And I won't give it away at this stage. Beautiful artwork. And that was taken in the caravan park. It's a little bit blurry, that one. And that was, once again, I think I showed you that one before. That was in the caravan park. And that was just sitting on the table. That's this camera that we've just been looking at uh, because um, whenever I use one of these cameras, I try to take a photo of them so I can remember what film I used in which camera. There it is there. It's a nice looking camera. Beautiful retro look because it was retro. It is a retro camera. Now, now we're back again at the silos. Now, I'll just go through these shots. Have you worked out which one's which yet? Okay, I'll go back. I'll give you a clue. The uh, This one here is taken on the SRT 101. You can see some grain there on the in the blue sky. That's a bit of a giveaway, but that was taken on the Minolta SRT 101. And so was that. That was taken on the Canon 600D. You see, there's no grain in the uh, in the uh, sky, and you can see a few spots. I had a few spots on my lens over there on the right hand side, which I haven't taken away. And that's back to the, the camera again, the film camera, the SRT 101. You can see the grain quite clearly there and quite clearly there. And that's also taken with the uh, Minolta SRT 101, not quite so obvious. And that's with the, the film camera. And so is that. And so is that. And so is that. And so is that. I'll just show you, I did actually, one of these ones that I took with a film camera, I actually put into one of my um, printers here. And uh, hang on, I'll just stop sharing for a minute. And hold that up there. So that's um, a print that I did just on one of my Epson printers. I uh, haven't gone to any great um, pains to actually make it as good as I can make it, but that's not too bad. That's taken from the film shot, just from one of those shots that you looked at there, and I printed it out straight from the computer. So let's go back to where we were. Share the screen. Okay, here we are sharing the screen again. And that's taken with the film camera. That was that same bridge that you saw before. These are all shots taken with the film camera now. There's not too many of them, just a few. I haven't included any people. I don't um, take people. I take lots of people shots, but I don't ever, because of privacy and all that sort of stuff, I never really include them in any of these photo shoots. I wish I could because I've got some lovely stuff that I've taken over years of weddings and family shots and portraits, family portraits. That was getting towards evening, I think. That was taken on the film camera. That was out the front of the caravan park. A couple of ducks that come in to see us at the caravan park. Ducks are always looking for a handout. And there's a nice walking trail through these trees there. That's a, a color shot that there, and then I converted it to black and white. That's taken on the film camera. My wife walking on the path. There's quite a nice little walking trail along there. We saw a koala and there are kangaroos along there. I've done a bit of a video on that somewhere before. That's one of the trees that's in there. You can see they look a bit grainy, um, which can be an old film. Might have been an old film, might be just the processing. I don't know. Same spot. That's going back to that bridge again. Once again, taken on the film camera. That's taken inside the cabin, looking very untidy. As soon as we get into a cabin when we book somewhere, we don't take long to mess it up. Looks all nice and pristine when we come in. And that's back to the, the bridge again bridge and that's the last shot there i think of the actual caravan park 
This was flooded out a fair bit during the recent floods. Now, there we're going to go. Well, I'll leave it there because I'm going to put some of those shots um, at the end of the... Um, bear with me for a minute. I'm going to put some of those shots taken through the viewfinder showing how the needle works. Um, I, I, I use my mobile phone, which I'm filming this on at the moment, to try and line that up. Pretty hard hand holding it to get it done. I tried to put a couple of tripods together, but that didn't work either. So anyway, you'll see my efforts to try and do that at the end of it. Um, what else can I tell you? I was going to show you these lenses. That's a nice, it's got a built-in lens hood. These are what they call rock ore lenses, Minolta. Minolta MC Tele Rockor PE F4.5 F200 millimeter fixed telephoto lens. Here you go. And this other one was the um, the 28 mil. It's got a bit of a dent in the in there, but that's not not a problem. That's a 28 mil millimeter F uh, F3.5 that lens. And that's also a, a rock or lens, which is what these were. Quite chunky they are, but they're good. So from here, I'm going to attempt to add a little bit at the end of the, uh, uh, and give you some commentary on it, of the um, actual uh, meter operating, the, the, the watching through the viewfinder, how the needle works. Okay, so thanks for watching. Like if you like, but I'm, I'll add a few comments in a minute when I, when I get into that extra part of the film. So there you are. I hope you could follow what was going on with that little bit of uh, fairly amateurish uh, shots taken through the viewfinder of just matching the needles together as you change the shutter speed. And uh, you can have a fixed shutter speed and change the aperture and the same thing will happen. You just got to get the needles together. I forgot to mention some of the specifications of the camera, some of the things that you have um, you probably need to know about. I mean, you can look them up yourself, but um, uh, it's a focal plane shutter with speeds from one second to one one thousandth of a second. Flash synchronization and the flash sync speed is one sixtieth of a second. There's a self timer adjustable 10 second maximum delay self timer. Exposure meter through the lens full aperture measuring system with CLC contrast light comp compensator. Uh, so working range EV3 to EV17 with ASA 100 film. The battery is a 1.35 volt mercury battery or whatever equivalent you can get these days. Your viewfinder was pretty much explanatory, I think. Um, film advanced lever. Uh, film speed range goes from ASA 6 to, or ISO 6 to ISO 6400 and accepts a standard 35 millimeter film back in the day when when this camera was in vogue and, and i was using these cameras you could get lengths of film in 12 20 or 36 now you can only get 24 or 36 the 12 was handy if you want to do some test shots of course bayonet type uh, lens mount depth of field preview button for mc rock or lenses that's a button that was on the side there that i don't think i showed you i think that's this button here You can see that that button there. If you press that, oh, you can't really see what's going on inside the lens. Maybe you can if I do that. I don't know. Where are we? You might be able to see some movement happening there. But that's how you um, can stop the, the from the maximum open aperture viewing. You can actually stop it down so you can actually see what depth of field you're getting. You've got those in other film cameras as well. Um, it's got a PC socket where you can plug a, an external flash onto the side. Also got a, um, it hasn't got a hot shoe as such. 
it has got a, a a bracket there where you can mount a flash on there but it doesn't interconnect with the actual camera so there you go <coughs> that's the um minolta sr 101 i think i'm going a bit crooked here on my camera so thanks for watching like if you like subscribe if you wish and uh, i'll see you next time see you later